Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more. Today we have orientogenic keratocyst or OKC to learn. So we covered uh, radicular cyst and dentigerous cyst in our last sessions. So the third one is orientogenic keratocyst. It is a benign uh, which is not very uh, common one and which is a locally aggressive type of cyst now let's get into the details of okc as the name suggests it is a tooth uh, related cyst and which has a keratin deposition that's why it's got orientogenic keratocyst it's originated from dental lamina, remnants in mandible and maxilla, or it could be an extension of basal cells of overlying epithelium. So either dental lamina, it forms from dental lamina or from the basal cell of overlying epithelium. Moving on to the histopathology, the epithelium lining is uniformly thin, maybe 8 to 10 cell layers. The basal layer is palisaded, nuclei is polarized and intensely stained. Luminal cells has paracarotenoid and corrugated profile and there will be micro cyst formation. So uniform epithelial lining, palisaded basal layer, polarized and highly stained nuclei, paracarotenoid and corrugated luminal epithelial cells and micro cyst formation. In clinical features, uh, it commonly seen in second to third decade or it can affect to any age group especially adults people mm, and uh, mandibular molar area that is a posterior border is most commonly affected well coming to the radiographic features it has smooth oval shape and the cortical border uh, if a cortical border is well defined if not secondarily infected and these radiolucent lesions in some cases there will be multi local appearances mostly it will be radiolucent lesions some cases there will be uh, the bone septa uh, will be giving a multi local appearances and there will be keratin uh, presence in the cyst so that is why it is getting a keratocyst name so what is the effect on surrounding structures so when it grows along the internal aspect of jaw with minimal expansion but sometimes upper ramus and coronoid process uh, it shows expansion and it displaces and reserved teeth with uh, but the degree of uh, displacement and resorption is not as severe as dentigerous cyst so dentigerous cyst the displacement and resorption of the adjacent is, is more compared to the OKC. Inferior alveolar canal may, may be displaced inferiorly because of the compression or the pressure it applies and it occupies the maxillary antrum if it affects the maxilla. If the cyst is in the maxillary region, it occupies the maxillary antrum region. Most commonly the differential diagnosis is dentigerous cyst, ameloblastoma or odontogenic myxoma. Treatment can be uh, done using wide surgical excision to avoid a recurrence or masopialization also can be applied. So, adendogenic keratocyst is uh, not very detailed uh, one. It is a uh, uh, benign, uh, a rare cyst which is uh, locally aggressive seen in the posterior uh, mandibular area most commonly and which has uh, keratin deposits in the cyst so that's all about okc or odontogenic keratocyst i'll come up with a new topic in oral pathology thank you